I'm going to have to admit, up to 2012, me and a few other people on the internet have always seen Street Fighter 2 as the first Street Fighter. But obviously, there's a 2 in the title, so there must be a first. Back then, as a kid, we just grabbed the game and played it. We didn't have any sources apart from magazines to look up gaming information, and that was limited to information publishers put out. Retro wasn't really a thing back in the early 90s, as there wasn't much gaming history at that point. In 2012, I thought to myself, wow, I've just realised there must be another Street Fighter game before this. I wonder what it would look like. So after seeing it for the first time on episode 85 of the Angry Video Game Nerds seven years ago, I thought today I'll do my own review. The first Street Fighter game was actually released in 1987 on the arcade machines. Two different types of arcade machines to be precise. The first arcade machine was actually the first of its kind. There was two pressure pads, one for punch and one for kick. The harder you hit the button, the harder your attack was. As you can imagine, the arcade machines were actually breaking quite a lot. So they changed it to the six button control system we know today. A year later, in 1988, Street Fighter would then start to make its move to home consoles. There was going to be an 8-bit version of Street Fighter coming to the home consoles, but was never released. Here is the only one picture that exists of the potential version from Capcom. The consoles it did came out for were Commodore 64, PC Engine slash Turbo Graphics CD, but on the Turbo Graphics CD it was actually called Fighting Street, which I have no idea why they swapped that name on that particular version. Then they went back to Street Fighter on MS-DOS, Atari ST, Amiga, the Amstrad, the ZX Spectrum, and then eventually it did come out in 2009 on the virtual consoles. You can also find it on the Capcom Classic Collection Volume 2 for the PlayStation 2, also the Capcom Collection on the PSP, and now it's on the Street Fighter 30th Anniversary Collection. There's no character select screen. You either use the first port on your controller for Ryu, or you use the second port for Ken. There's no actual difference between Ryu and Ken, apart from appearance-wise. They all have the same moves in the three specials, Hadouken, Shuriken, and Tatsu. The gameplay is a bit stiff from a Street Fighter standpoint. What I mean by that is, being as I played Street Fighter before, doing Hadoukens, Shurikens, and Tatsu is easy flowing to do on other games. But on Street Fighter 1, it's very hard to do. You basically keep doing the move set on the controller and randomly a Hadouken would just come out. But because this was the first Street Fighter game, and no one knew or experienced the future of Street Fighter games, these controls and moves might be fine. Plus, if you don't look at it as a Street Fighter game, the controls are not that bad. So you can view the gameplay in two ways. One, talking about it as a Street Fighter game and comparing it to other titles. Or two, viewing it as it was like 1987 and we was playing this game for the first time, pretending Street Fighter after this one didn't exist. The main game, you fight 10 computer characters. The creators of Street Fighter 1 say, and I quote, Young Ryu fights an eight-man international tournament to prove his strength. This would also be the tournament where the famous shuriken that gave Sagat his chest scar would take place. First you select which country. This version only has a selection of two, Japan and the United States of America. I've seen versions that have an extra two, the UK and China. Not sure if these two can be unlocked in the game. If you know, can you please leave a comment down below. So depending on which country you choose, you fight that country's fighter first. Doesn't really matter which one you choose as you fight both Japan and US fighters in each selection. Also, the order in the fighters are similar after the first fight. For this review, I selected Japan. So you start off with Japan's fighters, forgive me if I ruin these names, Retsu, who's a Kenpo instructor. Next fight is also in Japan, Giki, did I get that right? A claw wield in descent of a ninja, which I guess they like having the claw wield in characters. So they created Vega 2 in Street Fighter 2, but not kept Genki. Sorry, Genki. This is where we see the classic plane traveling across the world map started from. From the United States, we have Joe, an underground full contact karate champion. And after that, Mike, a former heavyweight boxer who once killed an opponent in the ring, according to Capcom's description. But because of avoiding lawsuits for creating a boxer similar to Mike Tyson, 
They created their own heavyweight boxer, Balrog, in the later Street Fighters, but Mike and Balrog isn't the same character. From China, Lee, an expert in Chinese boxing, and Gen, which is obviously a recognisable character for us, an elderly professional killer who has developed his own assassination art. But I always thought he was Goken's master. But obviously this was the first Street Fighter game, so they might have decided later to change that. And from England we have Birdie, a tall bouncer who uses combinations of wrestling and boxing techniques. He clearly changes in later Street Fighters. And Eagle, a well-dressed bodyguard of a wealthy family who uses sticks. After you beat all eight fighters, you are taken to Thailand for the last two fights. You fight Aiden, a deadly Muay master, and his mentor, Sagat, which he is called Emperor of Muay And this is the game's final opponent. There is only three types of dialogue in the game. The audio isn't very good though, but this was the norm in 1987. All characters, apart from Sagat, say this when you defeat them. All characters, including Sagat, say this when they beat you. And this is what Sagat says when you beat him. As you press through the tournament, the challenges get harder especially when you get to Lee in China, and forget about Gen. When recording the gameplay for this review, I kept battling through loss after loss after loss, till I got to Sagat, and he is so hard, because doing Hadoukens, Shurikens and Tatsus take ages to do, and Sagat is so fast in his attacks you die in seconds, but the problem is you need Hadoukens to defeat him, as they do the most damage, and punches and kicks take ages to defeat someone. But eventually I actually defeated Segat. Eventually. There is also two types of mini games during the tournament. Like destroying the cars or kicking the barrels on Street Fighter 2. There's a traditional martial arts chopping blocks game. And also hitting of planks of wood. Out of the 14 characters in the game, only 6 will appear in future Street Fighters. Overall I think for the first Street Fighter game for its time, it's actually well presented and a good game. But playing it compared to the other Street Fighters is not that good. The controls are not like what they are on the other Street Fighters. It's not because of the age of the game. I find Street Fighter 2 controls nice and smooth to use. But this is only my opinion. Let me know what you thought of the game by leaving a comment down below. Also, if you haven't already, click subscribe on the channel so you don't miss any future reviews if you like this one. And I'll see you in the next video. All right.